you back for another scene time. We've got Frank and Josephine and Tripp here as always, and we're excited that Catherine Stanton is here to join us too. Welcome. Hi. I'm glad to have you back. If anyone ever wants to record one of these sing times with us, I usually am trying to record them on Sunday morning, so just let me know. So, Catherine, um, and those of you watching, we're going to continue practicing the hymn that we're learning to sing for Mission Sunday in March. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. We're going to go through the first four verses. And right now, I would just like for us to sing through as best as we can. This is our opening note. One. Ready? Here we go. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. right we were not going to be able to make ourselves clean but his blood allows us to be clean in God's eyes foul foul sinners foul we're, how are we foul sinners we we are honest maybe we can be physically mean maybe we can say mean words maybe we can not do what we're told what we're asked to do and help around our house disobey, disobey not put our hardest work forward in our school work um, God Yes, we can have a hard heart as well, and his blood can make the foulest sinner clean. So, we are going to now move on to learning about another missionary. Now, this missionary, pretty much everyone who's watching this is going to recognize her. Um, she sent us some pictures of her and her husband and one of her kids. This is Natasha Krizan. She and her husband, Jim, are missionaries that we support um, she has been a missionary for a long time, um, and they, lots of y'all have probably heard about their plans to be missionaries overseas again. Things are in flux right now because of the coronavirus, but um, she's still um, working, she's still on a, a, a missionary with the Campus Crusade. Now, have y'all heard of that word, Campus Crusade, before? Mm -hmm. I believe that was the same words we heard when we learned about oh, Frank yeah. Sindler. And he looked kind of like an older man now, right, when we saw his pictures. But he said when he was in college, because Campus Crusade for Christ is a college ministry. He became a Christian through Campus Crusade for Christ 
And today, Natasha, she's one of the missionaries of Campus Crusade for Christ. So it's just cool how everything is interconnected. And when you go to college, you might want to check out Campus Crusade for Christ. So we're going to learn about Natasha. She responded to my request about how has God assisted you to proclaim the gospel. And here's something that she wrote. She said, uh, when I decided to be a missionary, this is when she was in Russia, when I decided to be a missionary, God gave me the verse, go, I will be with you, from Exodus 4.12. Now, I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me come up here. I want to ask one of my kids to read this. Josephine. What does this say? Mm -hmm. Catherine, trip. Now, you can't read it I know. <laughs> because oh, I it's in Russian. I know that. I know. I think I know what what, what the word is. What, 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 what is it? Uh, I'm gonna stop you right now. I'm gonna stop y'all both right now. We can't read this because it's in a different language. She speaks Russian, and I got something here. Look at this. I have a Russian Bible that she gave us. Now, if you open this. This would make no sense to us. It does, it's, Why? It sense Why can't you read any of these words, Catherine? Because she speaks a different language, and we don't know that. Language. Not only is it a different language in the words, all the letters are different too. So it's like impossible. But people in Russia, they need to learn the gospel too. So I just think it's really neat that we have an example of a Bible verse that's written in a different language. And God said, go, I will be with you. How do you I'm going to keep reading her response. Hold on. She said, Every time I went to share the gospel, I knew he was with me and assisted me. It looked different every time. When you work in a closed country like Russia, there are lots of situations when God's need is to open the door or nothing will happen. In Russia, in order to get into the dorm room to meet students, we have to go through a checkpoint where an older lady checks your identification badge to make sure you live there. And we would pray and we would go hoping for miracles. You can't imagine how many times God made those people blind. They acted like they never saw us and they never asked for our ID badge. Another time, we planned a big evangelistic concert at the main university in town. And God definitely opened the door for us to have a chance to have the concert. The day of the concert, our equipment got arrested by the customs. So all that equipment for the concert was arrested by the customs officers. We had three hours to solve the problem. We had invited 3,000 students and they were going to be there. So Natasha said, I had to go to the customs officer in our region. I was scared, but God gave me the right words to say and the customs officer let our truck with the equipment go. God gave us favor in his eyes. And that night, 3,000 students heard the gospel. I would say that definitely sounds like God was right beside her and assisting her. Do you know what a customs officer is, by the way? No. So a customs officer, we have them here in the U.S., it's responsible for controlling the flow of equipment and goods, and she needed all that equipment, the speakers and the microphones and the guitars and all that stuff to get to where the concert was going to be, but someone had confiscated the truck, and she, well, God, changed that man's heart. He could have kept it. The office, she had no power to get that equipment back. And God just said to that maybe made that person's heart change and said, okay, I guess you can have your stuff back. Whenever in, in Russia, it is not really okay like to be doing evangelistic stuff like that. That's like a miracle. It is a miracle. That these missionaries are giving us examples of miracles, how God has assisted them in ways that they didn't even know possible. Um, I wanted to remind you, if you print out the missionary prayer list that's in your in, uh, email that Pastor Jeff talked about in the sermon last week, um, you'll get prayer requests for these missionaries. They will, um, they're telling us what they need to be, what, what we need to pray for. So these pictures that we're seeing in Natasha, where she has her family, she is, there's a picture of her holding Ryan, who's really big now, um, in front of a palace of a Russian czar, and the Russian czars used to not want Christianity spread. Um, that's Cool. I know, and we can pray for her and for her family and for all the other missionaries that we're learning about. All right, so we learned about Natasha Kazan. Please pray for her and her husband Jim and Ryan and Sam. Please keep working on the four verses for Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, 
and we will see you next week.